All right. Our next lesson, lesson 14, we're going to talk about behavioral denial of service protection. Now, in lesson 12, we talk all about layer 7 DOS protection. And you saw how uh, we can protect from, uh, do proactive bot mitigation with signatures and so forth. We talked about being able to identify client side and server side uh, transactions per second, uh, stress related stuff. Behavioral DOS protection is an additional feature uh, included with advanced WAF uh, that will extend your already fantastic layer seven denial of service protection that we covered in lesson 12. So we'll start off just by kind of doing a quick review of sort of how ASM works and, and how both, not just ASM security policies, but ASM denial of service protection, they both work off of signatures. Uh, you saw this in lesson 12 when you did your, your denial of service. Yep. For example, Apache Bench. Apache Bench uh, requests were blocked because they matched a signature. And so they were blocked out. So ASM is a signature-based product. That's how we do negative security. Another example is just your basic antivirus. Signature-based security. Now there's really only one real problem with signature-based security, especially if you're relying only on signature-based security, and that is new attacks. Attacks that we don't know about yet. Even with the best teams that we have over in Tel Aviv updating our attacks, we still have brand new attacks that are taking place right now that may take our web servers to offline because we don't have signatures yet to identify them. That's what this feature addresses. So Advanced WAP includes our behavioral DOS or BADOS detection and mitigation. So here's an attack. We don't know anything about it yet, but because of this feature, ASM will be able to identify that it is malicious and be able to begin blocking it once it recognizes it as a malicious request. That's essentially the idea there. The reason that those were in yellow is because they weren't known signatures yet. They were just malicious. But, a but, but this feature is what enables ASM to identify and then mitigate new bad traffic. How is this done? How is this done? So there's a couple of pieces of, of um, how the feature works. The first and most important part is in order for ASM to recognize that something is wrong, ASM needs to know what is right. And that's done by establishing a baseline. And the baseline is established just through a series of valid requests that occur over a period of time to our website. So these are all going through the web application. It's just users using it. And ASM basically creates a picture of what is considered normal traffic. This is done with an algorithm that is very sophisticated, so sophisticated that I wouldn't even try to explain to you how it works uh, because the folks at, at FI won't tell me how it works either. All I can tell you is it does work and it works really great. So that's how the baseline is established. And the baseline is maintained on an ongoing basis through the you know, weeks and months of our web application. The baseline can continue to adjust and evolve based on traffic and new functionality on the web application and so forth. So we're, all, we're always getting this baseline. So that's really the first part of behavioral denial of service is establishing a baseline of normal traffic for the web application. The next is how this baseline is used. So when we're using the behavioral denial of service protection, another algorithm is used so that when requests arrive at ASM, the algorithm just kind of examines the request 
to the baseline and it just makes a quick judgment that this doesn't look unusual. This doesn't look anything different than the baseline and uh, it's going to go ahead and just let all that traffic through. So all incoming traffic will always be examined for the baseline, compared to the baseline and see if it's unusual. What about requests that don't match the back baseline? So now something semi-malicious is coming in. It's an unknown attack. We have no signatures for it. So the algorithm uses the baseline and it recognizes, you know what, that's a little odd. That doesn't, that deviates from our baseline. Something's malicious, I think, We'll say suspicious with that request. So what do you suppose Advanced WAF does with that request right now? Do you suppose it just drops it? Or do you suppose it's going to let it on through? At this moment, I think it will let it go on through. You're correct. It will let it on through. Because it's not certain yet yep. that it's malicious. It just knows that it's unusual. So we will let that traffic through, and it'll continue to do that. Well, if it is malicious in some way, the goal of whoever is submitting this is to harm the servers, typically trying to take them offline. And we would see that in the form of overutilization. Their CPU utilization would be going up. And if they ever succeed at getting to the point where it's at the, the height of its utilization, then that server may go offline and all of our valid users can no longer access the web application. That's not good. So now comes the way this feature comes together. We now have the baseline. We now have requests. They're being sent through. The server is now coming under stress, we call it. It's getting overutilized. So now there's two conditions that are going to be met. The first condition is request comes in, the algorithm checks against the baseline and says, it looks suspicious, something suspicious. And then advanced WAP takes a look at the server. Let me take a look at the server. Huh, that server is overutilized. That server is under stress. That is when the behavioral denial of service protection kicks in. And immediately what ASM does, I think this is brilliant, what advanced WAP does, not only does it drop that traffic, oh no, that's not all. It creates a signature. We call this a dynamic signature. So instead of waiting for a signature to be released from our uh, Tel Aviv team, or instead of trying to create our own signature, Advanced WAF creates the signature for us. Now it applies that signature to the policy. So at this point, any traffic that comes in that matches that signature will just be immediately dropped. So that is the idea, that's the concept of behavioral denial of service protection. How do we set it up? It's actually rather simple. We're going to assume we've already gone through everything we did in lesson 12. We've got all of our layers set up in denial of service. We've got a DOS profile set up we maybe turned on uh, proactive bot defense and bot signatures and TPS-based detection. We maybe have, we've done all that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the behavioral DOS protection. And for that, we're gonna come down here to the behavioral and stress-based detection option and turn it on. Put it in blocking mode. We have a couple ways you can, you can uh, define thresholds. So, uh, this is all on how we uh, define the stress on the server side. How, how do we know the server is under stress? The actual behavioral detection and mitigation, though, is what really what we're covering is down here. So I'm actually going to move down just a little bit so you can see this. So there's a couple things we can do here. The first, bad actor behavior detection. We want to enable that because what that's going to do is that's actually what literally enables this feature. That is what enables behavioral DOS. It enables the traffic behavior, it enables the server capacity learning and the anomaly detection and so forth. 
it also, as it implies, is going to ena uh, enable bad actor detection. So we're going to be able to also add to it when a source is part of the attack. But the main thing that does there is it turns on this feature. Then we also have to add an additional option there that, yes, we want to use the dynamic signatures. So that's what will create dynamic signatures. And then we have some different forms of mitigation. Obviously, we want to turn on mitigation. So we have a few different options here. And I'm, I don't necessarily want to read this. What I wanted to show you is that each of these adds a little bit more. Um, so this says if the bad actor detection is enabled, it's going to slow down and do some rate limiting on IP addresses that look you know, suspicious, that are being part of this traffic, and so forth. And if request signatures are uh, enabled, it's going to block requests that match that dynamic signature that's created. That's your standard conservative protection. Oh, excuse me, I shouldn't say that. That's your conservative protection. The standard protection does everything that we just saw, has the bad actor detection, rate limit, but also limits the number of concurrent connections from IP addresses and so forth. So it's also going to do some uh, a limiting of concurrent connections. So just a little bit more than the conservative. And then the aggressive adds a little bit more here, increases the impact of blocked requests, uh, proactively performs protection even before an attack. So it is now going to be even more aggressive. And if it's not already clear or obvious, if you want to have less false positives, you're probably going to go with conservative or standard protection. If you want to really apply the most aggressive protection, you'll use the aggressive protection, as it's called. But that's all that you need to do to set this up. And that's your behavioral DOS protection. Once this is running, then you can, uh, you can uh, there's a uh, couple of reports you can go in and view. We saw some of those reports in the Layer 7 DOS section. One other thing you can look at under your uh, DOS protection is we have our signatures page. And this is where you can take a look and see, are there any dynamic signatures at this time? There are, there's a few. And so these are signatures that have been dynamically created because there was something that didn't match the baseline and the server was then under stress. And there's some more information over on the right. I'm not going to go over all of this, but you can see you know, how much was dropped and so forth. You can also uh, view the details of any of these. Notice here I'm clicking there. This is really interesting. I'm clicking here, not here. They take you to two different places. It's really rather unusual. I'll show you where both places are. If I click on kind of right there, then look at this, you get all this data here about the, uh, about this, uh, uh, the signature. And you can do some stuff in Wireshark with this, I believe. So just a lot of data about the signature itself. More stuff over here. But then you can also change the properties of this signature. To change the properties of the signature, that's where I'll actually click on the signature name. And then you have some properties over here. Right now it's set to mitigate. You can give it a different alias. And you can make it what's called an approved signature. Once it's an approved signature, then it becomes a permanent, essentially a permanent signature for good. So there I'll to change the name or the alias and I will approve it. And when you do that, now you will see that it's been manually approved. So that's behavioral denial of service protection in a nutshell. Now you get to go and play with it. Um, this is one of the exercises that, uh, this is a tough one to demo. Um, and this is, we're gonna do this in conjunction with a break, and I'll tell you why. Because the first thing we need to do after you create a security policy, uh, we're gonna start with a new security policy, you're going to create a new DOS profile. You're going to enable the behavioral denial of service protection. And then once you enable the denial of service protection, what happens next? 
we have to establish the baseline. And then establishing the baseline takes some time. We just have to be patient and wait for the baseline to be established before you can move to the next step in your uh, lab exercise. So once you have your baseline traffic generator running, then it's a good time to take a break. And uh, it might even take as much as 10 minutes. Um, you can monitor the, the progress and you can see where about we are in the, uh, the baseline uh, creation. And then once we're at a point where the baseline is created, then you're going to go launch an attack that ASM doesn't know about yet. And then you're going to wait. It's going to take a few minutes because ASM has to first recognize that something's unusual but then it also has to wait for the server to start showing some stress, and then you should see a dynamic signature created. And once you have a dynamic signature created, then you should see that even if you try to resubmit this attack over and over again, all requests get blocked. And you can see that on one of your reports that you'll take a look at as well. Great exercise, a lot of fun. So give you a nice long time to do that 60 minutes.